前もやらないかたまには仲間に入れよういや俺はいい。Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 gods of death from different mythology. This is one saint that definitely is made out of money. Hungry for battle and blood. Well, if you won't say it, I'll say it. Goodbye, Zagreus. For this list, we'll be ranking the most well known deities associated with death from various mythologies around the world. Did we miss your favorite? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Someone tell me how to let it go. Number 10, Camazots. The reputation of this entry is obviously right from its English translation, Death Bat. Camazots are minor deities that lurk within j i b o l b a the Mayan underworld. Camazots, the bat god, spreads his leathery wings and devours all who cross him. They're most often associated with the ritual of sacrifice, death, and darkness, and can prove to be vicious little buggers for anyone who c r o s s their path. <laughs> One particular story about the Camazots can be found in the Popol v u h a collection of stories recounting the history of the k i c h e people. According to the tale, one of these bat like monsters actually snatched off someone's head for the gods in their next sporting event. We wonder how many points a human head would be worth from the free throw line. <laughs> Number 9, Erlik. Siberian mythology says e r l i k was God's first creation, though his hubris eventually saw him expelled to the underworld. In Turkic and Mongolian legends, e r l i k is the god of death and hell, who, nevertheless, had a role in the creation of the world. Despite this, e r l i k is still responsible for darkness, disease, and evil spirits. He's said to bring about bad luck and illness to humanity, thanks to the spirits he created. You know, the whole death deal. Oh, and his appearance is described as being monstrous. He's an aged male with a muscular body, but what's frightening is his pig face, sharp teeth, and black eyes. He demands sacrifice from all, and can be known to be vindictive should he feel he's not been properly acknowledged. Number 8. Santa Muerte. Contrary to other gods on this list, Santa Muerte is simultaneously associated with both death and healing. Santa Muerte, the saint of death. She is also said to provide safe guidance to the afterlife. This deity of Mexican heritage is known as Our Lady of the Holy Death in Spanish, and she's often prayed to for protection against a wide variety of things, from witchcraft to gun violence. Shrines are also devoted to Santa Muerte, with arms and trinkets offered to skeletal idols that represent her. Interestingly, Santa Muerte isn't seen as a dead human being, like other saints are. She's also the only saint associated with death in Latin America that's depicted as female, despite originally being depicted as male. That's some girl power right there. She's known by many names the skinny lady, Nina Blanca. The Holy Death, Santa Muerte. Number 7, Mot. Mot and Baal are two gods referred to in the Hebrew Bible, among other texts. Mot is often considered as a personification of death, with his name literally meaning the word in several languages. <laughs> He was worshipped by Hebrews, by the Phoenicians, and the people of the Ugarit in ancient times. Both Baal and Mot come from Ugaritic texts, an extinct Semitic language that contained its own mythological stories prior to the writing of the Bible. Some sources even link the Jewish Passover tradition to Mot and Baal's violent conflict, right down to the consuming of lamb, as Mot supposedly devours Baal in a similar fashion. Here he comes! Sweet Fox is just a mouth now! Number 6, Shinagami. Hey, even death needs a little help once in a while. And when that moment comes, Shinagami will be ready. These gods are found in certain corners of Japanese mythology, and they're usually connected with influencing the demise of humans. <gasps>
while some say the death spirits are known to possess people and push them to take their own lives. Other stories claim that Shinigami decide the moments of people's deaths. There have been a number of pop culture programs that feature some iteration of the Shinigami, such as the anime series Bleach and Death Note. Death Note は人間ライトと死神リュークをつなぐ絆だ Number 5. Anubis Anubis is one of the multiple Egyptian gods that are associated with death. You are released. This judge, previously associated with a jackal head, but is now more accurately described as a wolf, weighs the hearts of souls that are attempting to enter the underworld against the feather of Ma'at, which represents concepts like truth, morality, balance, and justice. The if the sins of the deceased person's heart weighs too heavy on the scales, the soul is doomed to be devoured by Amit, the devourer of the dead. Anubis is also closely associated with the mummification process, embalming and graves, which isn't super out left field considering those are all things connected to death. Interestingly, Anubis is one of the most popular Egyptian gods, but isn't actually featured in all that many stories. Guess he's a pretty busy guy. Number 4. Neagal We're heading to the Mesopotamia for our next death entry, the war god Neagal. Marble! Great! What are you doing here? I have just created the most excellent pizza! Most mythological narratives describe Neagal as a co-ruler of the underworld alongside his consort Ereshkigal. Beyond this, Neagal was also presented as a god of destruction and also of the summer sun. The two are more linked than you think, as the heat of the sun would often destroy harvests. A combination of Ares and Hades wouldn't be too far off from describing him. Although, unlike these gods, Nergal was worshipped by households seeking protection from evil or enemies. Nergal even receives mention in the Hebrew Bible, named as the god of the city Kuth. Number 3. Mitlan Tekutli there were reportedly nine levels in the Aztec underworld of Mitlan, and all of them take a knee to the Mitlan Tecutli as their king. Mitlan Tecutli is perhaps the best known of the Aztec death gods, comparable to the Mayan god Apuash in his chiefdom as ruler of the underworld. He was usually portrayed as a bloody skeleton or a man wearing a skull head with eyes. It was the worship of Mictlán Tecutli that often connects the modern-day idea of ritual sacrifice to ancient Aztec cultures. Bats, spiders, owls and other nocturnal animals are sacred to him, and he is said to live in darkness with his wife, Mictacasiwat, welcoming the dead into their grasp. I will stop you, consume you, body and soul. Number 2. Firo. Hey. Here's a horrible thought. What if the Lord of the Underworld actually gained strength by eating the dead bodies in the Underworld? And what if, eventually, he were to devour so much of the dead that he'd be strong enough to break free from hell and wreak havoc? Enter Firo, the death god from New Zealand's Maori mythology, whose backstory is exactly that. As a result, the Maori culture encouraged cremation if at all possible, so as to deprive Firo from his food source, if you will. It's one doozy of a story for what's otherwise a relatively obscure death deity. He's known to be reclusive, living in a deep and dark cave and awaiting the day of his return. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Thanatos Okay, so you probably all know Hades from the classic tales of ancient Greek mythology, but did you know that Thanatos is actually the god of death? Whereas Hades is in charge of the underworld, Thanatos is the personification of death. You thought you could just get away from me, did you? He's the son of night and brother of sleep, which makes us think maybe personification runs in the family. Although he's rarely a central figure in Greek myths, the ones he does make an appearance in are pretty interesting. Ares chose poorly that day. <laughs> 
For example, in one story, King Sisyphus tricks Thanatos into imprisonment, thus making it impossible for anyone to die on Earth. For the most part, though, it's Thanatos who does the imprisoning. When the Fates, his sisters, have decreed a human's time is up, Thanatos brings them to the underworld. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. I don't wanna feel this anymore.